1991 Dodge Stealth RS. That means two-wheel drive. It has the five-speed front-wheel drive in it. But, well, actually it's not in it. It's out of it. James and I, this is James's car. And when he bought it, there was just some transmission issues. He knew that there were tra transmission issues and engine issues. I, evidently, it turned out there's, there's not really any engine issues so much as there are transmission issues. We had to stop halfway home and, and tow it. Oh, there's a, some video of that anyway. We pulled the transmission out uh, a few weeks back. And, um, you know, James has got to, uh, well, we got to rebuild it basically. And uh, by we, it's the royal we, I suppose. So it's me, basically. I got to rebuild this transmission. We, we pulled the case apart and took a look at it. We have a we have a, a new bearing kit, a new oil seal kit right there. So that will be able to repair all the oil seals. Not that I don't think it was really leaking so much, but you always replace the seals when you rebuild the transmission. It's the bearings that I'm worried about. If you take a look at this, the the shafts are so misaligned right there. You see how this one is lower than this one? Like that that they should be exactly in the same plane like those two. These two right there should be at the same level like those two. That's that's where kind of we're dealing with. It would it would pop out a third gear when you uh you know if you weren't holding the the shifter and fifth gear it would just always just pop out of Fifth gear kind of gets attached to the end of here. We have already taken fifth gear out. It's out here. It didn't grind or anything like that. Like none of the none of the um, gears uh, were grinding. So I think the synchros are fine. But um, there's fifth gear. There's the mid case bolts, rear detents, backup switch. Uh, it's the reverse idler, end case. You know it all. Looks pretty good. The, the 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 real problem on this thing is I think that I'm gonna t I'm gonna take these uh, I'm gonna take the shifter forks off and and get these gear sets out here real quick. But I but my my guess at this point it's been sitting on the bench for for a little bit when we were waiting for a rebuild kit and I was waiting for James to actually start in on it but he hasn't yet. But my guess and we'll get to my guess. My guess is that the that the um, the bearing on the bottom of this shaft right here the input shaft is just toast i think it's gone or you know it has a taper bearing like this on it so i think either the cage is blown out or these bearings are gone or well i don't know but something something is weird with that because it shouldn't be sitting that far deep into the case <laughs> and this is why all the shifting problems were happening on this transmission so well, let me take it apart and see what's going on in there Yep, there's your problem right there. That right there is the inner race of the input shaft taper bearing. Now, this right here, this should look a lot like this with some bearings on it and stuff and all captured on there. It's one piece, like these taper bearings are they're one piece. The inner and the outer race get kind of... Um, put or the inner yeah the inner and outer cage parts right there's an inner race and then an outer cage that all kind of gets pressed onto the shafts as one and you can see this this race just completely <laughs> fell apart the rest of it's in there I, this 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 shouldn't this should not be like that uh yeah so anyway it's completely destroyed. This part of it right here is just kind of worn away, I guess. Uh, so, that's a bad bearing. Making a little bit of progress on this. I've got um, two of the outer races um, pulled out of the case on this side. Um, I actually had James over here and talking to him about the tools that we would need to get the shit out. But I found... Um, because there's, there's these things called a blind hold bearing remover. And you can basically pull these out with that tool. And I want to see if one of his buddies has one for this size bearings. Um, they're pretty big. 
I can get one on the internet, but they 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 don't come as big as oh big enough to take out some of the some of the um, bearing races, especially like that one. The differential one is the biggest one. Um, but I what I did was I managed to cut one of these. Um, this is just a, a, a jaw from a, just a two jaw puller, and I cut one down. We can see that this is grounded on my on my grinding uh, wheel they start out like that and so I ground it out like that so that I can get a lip or get a like a little a lever action underneath of it because on both sides you can see like right there there's like cutouts on on two sides of each of these races where you can stick a tool in and kind of lever it up so I, I that's what I'm doing it's worked on this one it's worked on this one and so making some progress you know this one's a little bit more difficult because it doesn't have a bottom it has the input this is on the input shaft so I have to brace it up with some washers or something else in there so I can pry on on the tool in, in that hole um, and also it's the same kind of story with the differential ba uh, bearings there's a you know there's a hole on the bottom so there's really not anything to pry against on the on that side you know so I'll figure that part out these two I think I might be able to pop out these two over here I might be able to pop out with a like a socket from the other side but that one's a blind hole too so but you can see this is actually a pretty good view of it right here you could see the little grooves underneath where you know, let's see if I can point them out but the little groove right right under here where 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 you can stick a little edge in and the same on that same on that side over there it's just difficult with the light now. It's, it's in a tight spot there. But anyway, I'm, I'm making some progress. It's coming along uh, um, a little slow going, but it's coming along. <clears throat> okay, I think I figured out a way to get this, uh, the bearing sleeve out for the input shaft. This is kind of a little boring, but I think it might help somebody if, if they're in this spot. That's not the one. Um, what you do is you find a... Yeah, you find a, a washer that's big enough to fit in the in the base there, and um, then that's what you're going to press against. Right there is a good fit, so it's not really moving too much. And then what I did also was I just oh here here's the other one, just take another one, so that there's two of them stacked up in here. I mean, you might have one that's thick enough to have just one in there but basically the top of this washer is above the bottom of the the seat for the um uh for the for this race journal in here and um then i just am doing the same thing with these little hook things getting in there and beating it back with a hammer unfortunately i, I can't really show it on on video because you know i, I gotta use two hands but i'm able to pry against this and it's plenty strong because it's really it's pushing against uh, a solid base here so I think that's gonna work out just fine I got the uh, the other output shaft sleeve out and uh, just yeah just working through it yep that came off like it should <clears throat> this uh this race actually doesn't look as badly damaged as I expected there's some galling right there and some right there but as far as like how it feels like there's only a slight tiny little groove along the bottom edge there you can see that or not that you can feel with your finger so yeah, it's pretty bad but uh I mean, the real messed up part was the, the freaking cage that exploded you know that's just garbage but I, I honestly like expected this to be in worse shape than it is anyway i got that out of there and uh that's four four out of eight <laughs> i gotta do i'm just keeping track of a video here clutch side inside and I, i'm also kind of just measured the shim on the output shaft it's the only one on the inside that i took out so far and i'm using my, my star to do it and so that's coming in and i just want to know what shims i we have so that when we when we uh measure for uh end play and preload and stuff with uh solder it's kind of goes on later but uh, then we at least know what shims we have We'll probably have to order some to get this shimmed right, but uh, yeah, just 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 going through it. It's neat. Okay, I'm impressed with myself. I was able to get all the all the um, races out of of both sides of the case. See in here, 
all three of those are out that's out I got I've got them all labeled in in the box where our rebuilt um, where our new bearings are and I've just got them set aside so that they're kind of like organized a little bit input shaft output shaft intermediate shaft differential and these are the old races and the shims are are in each you know the shim and the and the old races are in each section so this one had a little filter on the end of it too but the old races there's the two races for the input shaft and then the stuff for the uh, output shaft there <clears throat> I measured out all the uh, all the shims and what bearing goes on which side and it was all thanks to these hokey little um, two jaw puller um, ends that I that I uh, hacked away at but this does the trick the the journals in the uh, on the clutch side the ones that don't get shimmed the all the races in here seemed a little tighter than the ones on the on the ends case side the ones that do get shimmed so I'm happy about that because we have to put them the new races in with some solder underneath of it put the one and reassemble it um, and then take it apart again basically to measure the solder to see what size shims we need to get if we need to get any um, different size shims uh, to put it back together but uh, and so and those all came out really like not not difficult at all the the intermediate shaft and the um, <clears throat> and the input shaft they both just popped out with um, some large sockets. This one for the um, inter or for the uh, intermediate shaft, and then I use this one for the um, for the input shaft side. But um, the other one just pried out, or the output shaft one just pops right out with the, those little pliers. And then on these ones, you have to turn the case over, like like I have it here. You have to turn the case over and kind of um, dig the. Uh, the, the hook into the end that has the uh, opening. There's only one opening on these differential um, t uh, bearing um, sleeves, these taper outer races. You can see right here, here's the opening on this side. You see there's only one of them, but they pop out real easy. You just get your, your tool in behind there and then just, you know, and then just, um, you know, pop it down and it, they come out pretty easy. Same with the the um the oil seals like there's one oil seal there i just took it off with a, a socket and and uh yeah everything all of the all the bearings and seals are out of uh, both sides of these cases it's time to clean this thing up and uh yeah and move along i've got to take the uh i've got to take the actual uh the the bear the other side of the bearings off of these shafts that'll be the next bit should be interesting but uh, I got a new, I got a new set of, a new tool here. Just came in today, actually. Um, this is what I'm going to use to uh, to help me with that. It's a bearing, it's a bearing puller set. Um, it's a, yeah, two and three inch bearing separator puller set. Um, and basically, yeah, I'll, I'll probably show you how to how to use this when I get it set up. But this is something for the shop press because those are on pretty tight and uh this should help me get them off there's a magnet inside the transmission to catch all the all the metal shavings look at that <laughs> that's thanks to that bearing that just fell loose but no big chunks or anything like that just a fine mist of all kinds of metal it's like a metal paste you know oil metal paste neat got the case sections all cleaned off well degreased i didn't really do much more than just throw a little engine bright on them and throw them in the in the sink you know in the utility sink and uh and just rinse them off kind of brushed off the hard spots but they're looking well they're not greasy anymore or oily when you're like touching them and stuff anyway first on the chopping block uh out of the four shafts quote unquote shafts inside the the um train in the in the transmission you have yeah you, ha you have four of them right you have the input shaft the intermediate shaft the output shaft and the differential and this is what came out of it it's a regular open differential um 
but it's getting an upgrade in this transmission. He's got an OBX limited slip differential. That's right, folks. This thing is pretty cool. It's it's pretty high tech. Uh, he got a, a good deal on it, I guess, but um, it's not a closed differential. It's just a limited slip. See, like that's open and that's closed, but no, it's not. It's not really what that means. What that means is like, you know, on this, if you if you do a burnout, like one tire will spin and that's it. But with this, you do a burnout and both both of them are running. So that's what we're putting in. The only thing I have to do with this old differential is take the ring gear off. This this whole gear needs to come off and then be installed on that one. Then I need to also put some um, bearings on it that on the top and on the bottom. But uh, yeah, that's a neat little upgrade for them. Limited slip would be pretty sweet. Oh, little snag here. So I got the uh, got the ring gear off of the off the old diff, and um, you know it's fine and all. But like every single one of these fasteners, except one, are completely screwed up. I don't know how clear this is coming through on the video, but like they should be pointy kind of threads, not flattened out like that. They're all wasted. Now this transmission, you know, there's a good one here. There's one good one out of the, out of a lot of them, and and even then, it's still oh, it's questionable. Focus. There's some flat spots on it still. It's better than the rest of them, but like this is kind of usable, I'd say. <laughs> but the rest of them are just junk. I mean, some of them are worse than others. Let's see if this. Yeah, look at this. Look at all the chew. Look at the chew on that. Oh, it's ridiculous. So anyway, I mean that's just completely unusable. I need all new fasteners for this for this differential. That's fine. <clears throat> we'll just uh yeah, we'll throw the bearings on it and uh move on to the next shaft while we wait for those uh parts. I'm sure the parts list is going to start growing here soon cuz it's not just the fasteners. I know that we need some spacers here. Well, we may or may not need spacers, but like these there's spacers that go in between uh, the um, some of the outer taper bearing races and the case to make sure that the preload or end play is adjusted properly. And so I know we'll probably have to order some of those, but like this is going to have to go on the list too, some of these fasteners. But we can't really find out the spacers until I was going to get all the parts from the same place because they have all, it's all like Mopar, Mitsu parts, you know. But I'll have to get these ahead of time. I'll have to get these now. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Mmm. <laughs> Thank you, laws of thermodynamics. I hope you should slip right on. We'll see. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. No. Not quite. Bummer. I'll just throw them on the press. Nice. Input shaft is coming along nicely. I got the uh, fifth gear needle bearing sleeve off. This is this goes up on the top there. That just pressed off. I pulled it with uh, one of my bearing separators, and then also this circlip that holds the uh, the um, taper bearing, this taper bearing down. I got those two off, and it's time to get the taper bearing off. And what I've noticed is the um, factory service manual has you putting the tool in like this, but if you do, there's no real way for it to grab underneath of there. So with my tool, see like I don't have the Mitsubishi or Dodge tool for this, so this is just kind of a 
generic, what is, what is it called? Uh, Z and A. Z and A. Made in, made in China. So, uh, it's Amazon special. I'm going to have to go underneath of it like this. And the thing that I'm noticing too is that even if I go under it like that, it's questionable whether or not it's even going to be on the, be able to get on the inside lip, the lip of the inside race there. That's what I really need to get under to pull it up. But I'll do what I can with my tools. Even if, even if this pops the race off, then at least, you know, this cage off, even if it pops the cage off, then at least I'll be able to pull up on the race that's in there. You know, hopefully with either this big, this big separator or, or the, the smaller one. Uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to bother with this. I, I tried to get it on. I got my, this is the, the biggest one I have is a three inch um, bearing separator. And it, it wouldn't grab the, this race. I'm not going to bother with it. Maybe I'll try and look around locally. There's a Harbor Freight. There's Napa. There's kinds of places I could probably just pick one up locally. I'll just see what I can find as far as getting that one off. I, I need a bigger separator for that, but uh, I'll just move on to the other side, the front side of this input shaft. That's where the actual bearing that exploded on us is. And so maybe I can get that one off. Well, that was pretty easy. I grabbed along the top side of it and then pulled it off that way. Um, that one came off fine. And give me an idea about this too, is like, what if I do it like this and then just put the outer race on the outside here to try and keep the bearings contained in here. So as long as the bearings are contained, they can push up against the top part of the inner race and hopefully the whole thing will come out without the cage exploding off and it'll just push up. So I don't know if this will work or not, but I'm going to see. It might. I don't know. I'm freaking brilliant. treasure trove of info on that last pull as you can see well as you can hear the damn compressor always comes on when I'm trying to film right anyway when I'm trying to film this shit anyway uh, it came off all right I got the um, got the old bearing off I said set, set it aside over there but uh, you know the um, the, uh, the fourth gear uh, rides on a needle bearing right below the input or b behind the taper bearing that we pressed on off and um, so does the synchronizer and check this out it's got um, these are not paper synchronizers usually they have a, a paper sort of material you can see it's a grooved machine fi finish on that and the, the manual actually says that they that they're paper but these are these have been upgraded this is an upgraded kind of thing these are new um, newer anyway I checked the clearance on the clearance on the fitment between there's a limit of how close this thing can get to the gear before they're considered worn and it's at uh, 20 thousandths but um, <clears throat> yeah this one's out at 50 and it, it grabs like a you know grabs like a charm this this other one it all of the synchros uh, uh, grab grab well I've already tested that but um, I gotta finally take a look at these and they're they're upgraded uh, synchros in this thing so I think somebody put a synchro set in this at, at some point I know the transmission was open before anyway the synchros aren't a problem and the taper bearings are off of this input shaft so now I can uh, throw it back together put the new ones on hopefully if I have uh, the tools in order to do it I, I might need to get some pipe to press some of them on um, over top of these shafts. I don't know yet. Um, I'll have to see, but I'll just keep at it. So I got these bullshit plumber's socket set like, I don't know, 20 years ago? I might have used it once. There are these stupid tubes that have a socket on each end. And you can see they're marked with the size of the socket. Whoa, that's bright. It is so bright. It's inch and seven sixteenths, inch and eleven thirty seconds on this one. They're all different. 
different various sizes. And the weird thing about it is that I think I can use it on this setup. Uh, for this one, this will fit over top of this shaft. And let me press this all the way down. And hopefully, if, as long as it's strong enough, it should do the trick. Let's find out. Nice. Oh, got to turn it on. front side bearing on this um, input shaft, the clutch side bearing, it's a tiny one, right? It's like this. In order to use my plumber's sockets, I would need to use that socket right there. Anything bigger would kind of hit the, hit the, um, just the edge of the, uh, will it? That won't hit the edge, will it? It's questionable whether or not it'll be able to press it far down enough. Even if I did, and I don't want to jam this thing onto the shaft. So instead what I'll do is I'll use the the top side of my of my uh old worn out beaten up bearing, the one that blew out on me, to press it in like that. And then I can use you know, a bigger side that'll definitely fit down the shaft. And that should work okay. I'll just have to press this off when I'm done. Let's see how that works. From the fourth rung. Had to lower it down a little bit. to pull this taper bearing off along with the first gear <clears throat> um, speed gear and um, you know I didn't have a bearing separator big enough to fit under there so pick one up from Harbor Freight this one is four and three eighths capacity and uh, it looks like it fits okay so I'm gonna go give it a shot and that came off easy uh, first gear looks fine. First gear synchro looks fine. Brand new, like, uh, like the others. All brand new. Um, and, you know, I forgot to mention also the, the journal that these, uh, synchros ride on. Mirror. Mirror finish. This is absolutely fantastic shape. Um, the second gear is still on this, uh, is on this, uh, intermediate shaft. And I think what I, I want to pull it off because the synchros seem a little close. And I can't really get a good measurement with it all kind of assembled so I don't know I might pull that uh, pull that gear off and take a closer look at the uh, second gear synchro again with the surprises on this thing so this is a three-piece synchronizer set uh, on second gear instead of just one synchronizer ring acting against the cone of the of the speed gear there's three actual rings and these all look new <laughs> as well. That's why they kind of maybe didn't seem right is because there's a little slop in them. I think it's just the way it works, but um, yeah, uh, um, I'll put this all back together. But um, yeah, I got it all taken apart and I think this second gear synchro is fine. So let's throw some bearings on the shaft. I won't be able to film this while I'm pressing it because it's a little bit more complicated than you know, the stuff that I've been doing so far. But basically, I'm, I'm setting it up like this so that the that the separator is supporting the intermediate gear on the shaft. 
and then I just slid the second gear down on there with the synchro on top of it and everything's lying, you know, like set up right. And then basically what you want to do is, you know, press this press the synchro hub down onto the spline part of the of the shaft but at the same time you want to make sure that the um that the keys for the um for the synchro line up with you know with the the little slots in t inside that uh in inside that uh, outside synchronizer ring and I was a little wrong about this. Uh, I think um, in the earlier versions of the transmission had just a one piece, um, a one piece synchronizer for second gear. But then the later ones, I don't know exactly when it started, but I know in '94 they had this three piece setup, and so that's what this has got. This is a newer transmission than the car. And the car's a '91. This is at least a '94 transmission, but. Pretty sure that the car also has a 96 engine in it, so this might have come with that engine. Anyway, let me get this gear set put back together. Now this setup's a little weird too. <clears throat> they want you to assemble the first gear and the um, the sleeve, the needle bearing sleeve, as a, as a set on top of the on top of this intermediate shaft. Now the problem is is that there's a needle bearing inside here and these things are I mean if you want to say dainty compared to the rest of the pairings in this thing that they're, they're dainty you don't want to crush them they're they're kind of really tiny anyway what I want to do um, instead of you know to avoid crushing that what I'm gonna do here is use just one of these small separators on top of the um, synchronizer assembly and um, so that I can support the needle bearing without it falling down in such a way to where I don't I don't crush the needle bearing when I start this thing out. See now right there the sleeve is centered so I can give it a little push but in order to I just need to bring it down a little bit so that I can kind of support this bearing on its own uh, by hand so that I don't cock it you know I don't want to cock it I just want this sleeve to go on straight first and then once it's on there a little bit I can support the this myself I'll take this this um this, this bearing separator out and I can I can push it in the rest of the way but the first part is going to be uh, just getting that sleeve on there just started on the shaft Should be good enough. I'd hold it up a little bit more <clears throat> with my finger under, from underneath, but it's on there centered now. You can see the needles rolling around the sleeve. And I should be able to get this the rest of the way on. It's going good. and tight. Yeah. Time for a taper bearing. Put the bearing started on it on the here on the bench just with a hammer just so I can make sure that it gets in there. It starts in there kind of straight because it's awful floppy on the top when you uh, when you just set it on there so let's press it the rest of the way on. Thing here. Yeah, something like that. 
That looks okay. Yeah. Intermediate shaft clutch side bearing. Moving on to the output shaft. I can't get underneath this taper bearing. There's just no space. The best I can do is get underneath the rollers. That's as much room as I have on any of the pullers that I have. This is probably the best one for it. It's the little three inch. Oh, let's take it off and hope it doesn't fly apart. Well, even if it does, it's grit. No, oh, the bigger one just started slipping off. I think maybe the smaller one might be my best bet here. It's trying to get underneath of it. Uh, I think I've got it on all four. I got all four sides on a roller at least. It might be a little bit underneath the tape or the cage. So we'll see if this works. Screw it. I'll do the easy side first. <clears throat> this side, there's plenty of room to to get a the separator on this is a three inch i might even just put that cap on there just to keep the rollers in place but yeah that should work that one came out just fine like i said no problem there this one is still i don't know i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut the cage off in a couple spots pull out the rollers pull off the cage so that i can put at least one of the bearing separators on the top on the top ring of the inner race and then pull it that way as barbaric as it is i think this is our best bet i've got it cut on four corners you can easily peel away the sides after that this is more like it got a strong perch on the very top part of the race with this thing let's pull it off victory victory is much easier than removal. Output shaft, done. We'll fly by on the tools. in the workshop but yeah I mean just do what it takes to get them things on so let's clean up a little bit another tool I didn't have to get this job done it's a bearing race and seal driver set and basically what it is it's a bunch of these um, cone shaped on the bottom but then a kind of like a circle thing to be able to press the um, the tapered bearings into their respective sleeves wherever they go on here. Basically, here let's take, this is for the differential I think, this is one of the bigger ones. You take a, an appropriately sized, that's not appropriately sized, an appropriately sized disc that fits into the taper and it lets you press it into the into the slot without damaging the race so yeah I can with with this set I should be able to um, install all of the all the tapers from the other side of these tapered roller bearings into the uh, into the case halves let's see how that works beautiful look at all that for these I used these these ones 72 
65, and 60. <clears throat> this one, this one was a little bit different. Um, the, this, this doesn't quite fit in there um, the way that it should. I don't, and you don't want to damage the race, sur the race surface right here, the journal surface. So what I ended up doing with that one is just basically kind of turning it over and, and pounding it in that way so that I didn't damage the surface. But all these on the clutch side case are installed pretty tight. Looks good. <clears throat> so there's spacers that go underneath of these uh, taper bearing races on the transaxle case side. This is the basically the end side. And how to measure that is before you put the tapers in, you do a, a before you install it for sure, you, 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 you test the clearance with these little bits of solder that you put in between where the race goes and the case itself. And then you reassemble the case and measure the distance on the solder bits. And then that'll tell you how much clearance there is between the bottom of the race and the case. And then you could use that for your end play and preload uh, shim sizes. So I'm going to do that now. That, that went pretty smooth. The trick is that you, you want to make sure that the solder stays in place sometimes i mean you could push them in a certain a, amount on some of them more than others like i think this one you can slide down a little bit more than and then you have to start tapping it in at some point but the trick is to just make sure that when you do tap it make sure that you don't lose the solder and sometimes it's hard to see but you can see the piece right in there and don't smash the shit out of it. You don't want to drive it home right now. You want to let tightening the case drive them home to see where your clearances are at. But just make sure that they're tight enough in there so that you can, uh, so that they stay in place. Put it all back together. It looks good. Um, it lined right up and like nothing was binding up or anything in there. And all the seam is perfect, solid all the way around. They want you to retorque it with those little solder spaces in there. Now I left it in first just so that I could make sure that everything is operating smoothly. I don't hear any weird noises or clunking or anything like that and so that is pretty good. Like I said it's just a dry run but now I gotta take it apart and measure those solder pieces so we can know what, how to shim this thing. Oh that was fun. Got all the measurements taken on my dirty ass piece of paper here for all the shafts. Figured out that we'll need a different shim for the uh, for the um, input shaft because the one we have is a 0409 and the clearance is around 530 so we'll need a bigger shim. I figured that one out. It's going to be like a 539 or something like that because it needs um, zero to two thousandths end play on that. The shims for the intermediate and output shafts are fine. They came into kind of spec already. Um, 420 to 445 on this. And this calls for zero to two thousandths end play, so that's fine. This is a 409 for the uh, output shaft. And the clearance on that was 420 to 410. And this calls for ten thousandths or zero to 20, or zero to two thousandths. Uh, not in play, uh, preload. This is pre, these are preloaded shafts. So is a differential. It's a preloaded shaft. So these, the shims that came with these are fine, but then this one on the differential, the shim I have is a 386, and the clearance on it is like 420, 4, 0430, and so we need a new shim for that because this needs a 0 to 2000 preload. I'm getting one. I've got these ordered. I've got one that's coming in. It's a 0433, so that should be fine for that. But yeah, we'll be able to use like uh, we use like this shim and um, this shim. But like the rest of the shim, these two shims, we need to kind of replace. And um, yeah, so it was, it was neat. But uh, so it's getting closer to being being actually able to put this together. Got to wait on some parts. And then we'll go from there.
cleaned up the case halves a little bit um, to see what I can see about them because I know that there's some obvious things that have happened to this case before. <clears throat> Here's one you can see the back side of the differential housing on the clutch inside the clutch housing right here is all gooped up and this is like a hard JB weld type deal that usually you use to cover a hole <laughs> uh, we'll get we'll turn that over in a second um, this little plug here is on the opposite side or this is the output shaft basically this this kind of housing right here and this is a technique that you use to remove the taper bearing race out of the case you know if if you can't uh, if you can't get to it from the top is you drill through and you pop it out from this side and then you just plug it back in when you're done and so that looks like that's what was done there other than that this looks okay Let's go to the other side. This this was repaired before. You could see the carnage going on in there. A differential bearing went out or just a, a spider gear explosion or something like that. This is where the differential rides. And this is all JB welded along here. So I'm guessing right here is the back side oh, where where I was pointing to on the back side where the goop was is JB weld. This is probably gouged or something like that from the damage that happened when this uh when this differential blew. <clears throat> now this wasn't the the differential was fine um you know on the, on the one when we pulled it it's just that this you know I'm just showing the repairs that have been done before you can see also there some damage on the side there in the differential part of the housing um i think that's it on this side on this side it's a little it's a little bit different um it looks mostly okay i guess the um one thing i saw right here is a cracked fin right there no big deal i mean that that shit happens and it's not really it's not really affecting anything, I don't think. Um, all of the mating surfaces, I'll, I'll say, you know, like this surface right here is flat. And the surface on, you know, on this one is flat too. Like it's all just flat. Um, the inside of this case looks good. The only other problem that I saw on this one, this is kind of a doozy. This was gooped over with, um, let me get the bolt here. This was gooped over um with another sort of jb weld so i peeled it off there was a bolt stuck in here this bolt right here and there's the jb weld so i'm gonna pull this out into the light so it's a little bit easier to see so this was the bolt that came out of it and um you can see right there there's some aluminum in them threads nice isn't it yeah it's because there's only a little bit of thread left in this thing. If you notice, let's see if I can get this right. It just, you know, bolts shouldn't do that. They they actually need to screw in. You can see it's cracked too, right along that surface right there. And this is some sort of, I don't know if it's all JB Weld in here or maybe somebody tacked it in with aluminum or something like that, but... This is the stuff that was peeling over it. It was JB Weld, and then there was this washer over top of that too. I could crush washer for to prevent leaks. But basically, that is the fill hole, I think. Yeah, the fill hole, and um, it needs work. So uh, I need to repair that. Um, I can, I can. I'm gonna think. I think what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna talk to James about it, but. I think what I'll do is just grind all this crap out of here, you know, and cut it down to where it's like clean metal on, on, on all this stuff and then just weld it back in. I have aluminum rods for my MIG welder. I've got a, a tiny little bottle right there. That tiny little bottle, that's, uh, you know, pure argon. So I, I, I can, especially on the thicker stuff, I can definitely weld thicker aluminum. So this might not actually be that bad of a problem, even though it looks like shit. Like, I mean, this is like, 
some people would look at this and say, oh my God, this case is garbage, but nah, I think it's salvageable. Let's see what I can do. Maybe, um, you know, it might involve some other things too, like drilling it out and tapping it for like an NPT plug that's bigger or something and use that, you know, after I get the, after I get the, um, the, um, surface fixed up and solid again, but, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I gotta, I gotta figure that one out. That shit is cracked all the way through. We'll get a close up on the parts that are there. You can see it's cracked all the way through, and actually, you can you can see the it just is a separate part actually. <laughs> so that needs to be welded back on there and fixed. Well, let me just explain what I'm going to do to to fix this this problem. I'm going to weld this. Uh, I'm going to weld that top lip back on and if you notice there's a couple of tiny little threads all the way back there I'm gonna drill I'm gonna drill those out once I get this welded up I'm gonna drill drill the rest of the way out with a, um, a drill bit that um, is you that I can use as a pilot um, uh, drill bit for a 3 8 NPT fitting and an NPT fitting is kind of like a tapered fitting. Um, the threads are, go, they don't go straight down the shaft. They actually kind of go in on a taper along, all, along the, all along the edge of it. And then, and then we'll just end up using a plug. We won't end up using this plug, but I did get a plug just to make sure that I, I can, you know, that it works after I'm done um, welding it on, drilling it out, tapping it. And I just want to make sure that I can get something fit in there. Now the reason I'm not going to use this plug is because I believe that I'm going to have to screw this in further than than you know than where the head is. Uh I might need to. This is a 5 inch this is a 5 8 5 8 inch hole, deep hole on this thing. So I'm I you know after I tap it, I, I want to get this in there really, you know, pretty tight. And I'm going to put some thread sealing on there to make sure that it's not um, leaking when we actually fill it. This is the fill hole for the transmission. So, um, but I got another, I got another 3 8 NPT plug that has instead of like a, a, a hex head like this that you can get on with just a, like a comp, you know, like a, a crescent wrench. You get on it with an Allen wrench. There's a little indent on the top of it. So it's kind of like a, like a countersunk almost like a set screw but yeah that's got to be welded on drilled out tapped <clears throat> no big deal i just got to set up my mig machine for uh uh for some aluminum which i i have all the stuff so i should be able to do it well welding it didn't work out but um i got uh i got it tapped out as you can see in there it actually looks pretty good and there's thread all the way around it in the back half of it, like in where the where the case is, um, you know, thick. Probably about a half inch worth of good solid um, meat on the side of that case. So uh, that should work. I got it, like I said, threaded for uh, 3 8 NPT. And these plugs should fit right in and, and go back past the um, broken part. The the piece that I'm waiting on though has that little Allen head instead of this kind, so should work just fine. All right, got some deliveries in today. Our shims, well, I got them in yesterday, I guess, but uh, it's finally getting around to it. Uh, the the new shims that we ordered for James's transmission came in, so we can finally put this thing all back together. I'm just ver verifying the size on it, you know, making sure that they're that they are what they say they are and they they seem to be and i think they'll work so yeah i got the um as far as what i've done uh other than that is uh i installed all the oil seals you can see the input shaft and then the two differential oil seals are installed i installed these oil seals with like a large um uh socket from the outside so you know like it's from the other side basically and I just got them so that they're so that they're flush with um, the kind of like the the lower part of it is flush with the case. 
and that's true for both of them. I think that'll work fine. Um, yeah, I think that'll work fine. So I can finally shim the ends, you know, the end case on this. And, or I guess they call it the transaxle housing case. I keep calling it the end case because I don't know. I, I don't know why, but anyway, I gotta, um, I gotta throw the, um, throw the shims in there and then throw the, th throw the, uh, throw the outer races in for reels this time and, uh, start putting it back together. Finally got all the parts to put this thing back together. The bolts that I ordered from the hardware store came in, so I was able to bolt that ring gear on the differential. And I got everything set back in the clutch side of the case, including the shift forks. They're all pinned in and everything. It all looks good. This is ready for some goop. So we can throw the other side of the case on it. I didn't really have any problems reassembling this stuff. It was all, it's all pretty straightforward, you know. Um, the only tricky part is getting these shift forks in. I mean, the only, the only thing you gotta, you know, make sure of is that, that you don't put in the, um, put in this uh, reverse idler gear armature, uh, uh, before you put these in. These, these have to, that has to be uh, removed before you can put these in, so, um, that's and that's it pretty much other than that it, it goes just like the factory service manual so nothing real special about it time to button it up okay, all right she's all buttoned up she's on the floor with James We're ready to put it in it's going in it's going in right now, isn't it? Right now. Tonight. Tonight. I'm driving it to school tomorrow. Oh, nice. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of briefly explain what's going on here in the video because it goes straight from us putting the, uh, the transmission in to, like, all of a sudden me talking about drive shafts and stuff without really kind of any explanation of what's going on with, well, why do you need new drive shafts? the differential that we put in has a different um spline count on it than the differential that we took out so the one that we took out is is from a is from a 90 uh or it's, i was trying to show it there but it's from a it's from an older uh transmission and um the the axles that we had just simply wouldn't fit in they just didn't work so um we needed to kind of resolve the situation and that's basically where the rest of this video is going like we got it all in there and then we couldn't drive it and so we figured it out that it's like there's a difference between in 91 and 92 the they had a 25 spline um output on the differential and then but then from 93 up they they it went to 27 so fun ensued it's crazy out here get a little nor'easter in pennsylvania i'm on the way home from getting the new axles for james's for james's car the old ones are the wrong spline count. So, being a good dad and all, take a trip down to Maryland for him. So, these axles, uh, they're just not going to work on James's car. We got the right um, spline count on the on the differential side. This is the difference between the 27 spline and the 25 spline and oh, no it doesn't look like much but this is a little bit bigger than this and this is the right size it does go into the differential the problem is i've got these lined up kind of so they're kind of square with each other the problem is that this shaft is too long it's longer than this shaft by about like eight millimeters or ten millimeters or like you know basically like quarter inch or something like that and the problem with that is that these brackets, the, the bracket that mounts to the block, it, it won't align. These, these brackets have little um, dowel pins on them that have to locate. And then there's basically bolt holes that 
you know, let, let you clamp the jack shaft into the into the block. This is what a jack shaft looks like just by itself. It's just a, a bearing that's bolted to the block and then that goes into the differential. This is the same 27 spline big one. Dude has a billion of them sitting on a shelf. I'm hoping that we can kind of figure out which ones that we really need for our application. We don't know why this is longer. Maybe it's a year thing, but I don't think so because the years are all listed as the same uh, CV axle from 91 to 96 on the manual transmission. So these are the same. They should be. And they do actually look the same lengths and everything like that. And I know that this fits into the hub on the, on the wheel. But, yeah, this is just like a little bit longer than that. We need it that length, but that spline. So let's... I gotta go back down to Maryland and get this figured out. What's the end of the Estelle video, you ask? It's not this. This is to explain we just changed the timing belt on James Estelle. That's right. We drove it in here under its own power, and he's been out in it. So that is good for 80? Good for 80? Easy. Easy. Easy 80. Easy 80. Um, but it's it's been having some island issues, so we changed the uh, timing belt on it. I think that's gonna solve some issues. But um, I wanted to talk just briefly about the drive shaft situation that we're in. Uh, the we initially got the wrong size or wrong length jack shaft on it. Go ahead, let her down. And then. So, but the guy was cool. He he was he worked with us to get the right size jack shaft. Like I said, he had a bunch of them on the shelf, and um, yeah, it was really cool. Man. Yeah, it was cool of him. And we got the right size. Okay, enough of that. We got the right size uh, jack shaft in it, but the what what it what was was it was there was an automatic version. The automatics evidently had longer jack shafts. <laughs> So we needed a shorter one. That, what that also means is that the CV axles that we got from him were from an automatic. So we were able to take the old original CV axle off of this side and stick it, oh yeah, and stick it in the jack shaft and that works fine on this side. But right on this side, we have no choice except to run the automatic um, uh, CV axle right now. James, you have one on order, right? It'll be here Friday. It'll be here Friday and that'll go in. But right now it kind of clunks on the passenger side a little bit when you go in right turns. Right turns. Right turns with acceleration. Yeah, it it clunks a little bit. So we don't want to damage the transmission any. So we've got a, we've got one coming in and that should be the actual final, you know, like real good test drive on it. But uh, for now we're just going to Wait on that part. Well, it's still surging. Pretty bad. So the timing belt didn't fix that problem. That's unfortunate. I need this light to like not be there. <laughs> yeah. Last piece of the transmission puzzle. 27 spline passenger side. Let me see that thing. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. That's fine. 27 spline passenger side. CV axle, so it's the right length and everything for a, man, for a manual car. So the test drive after this should be the telling one. Should be good. And so there's your difference right there. The green one is the automatic one that we had when we were running. And you see how much shorter it is than the one for a manual speed, for a manual transmission. It's longer. This is because the differential housing is located in a little bit different place on that transmission than this one so it's going in going out for a test drive this is all good axles new transmission yep. oh wait a second did you refill the transmission i did not but it was overfilled first it was overfilled anyway okay well we'll have to fill that back up we'll check it we'll check it all right we should be able to get it up to fifth on this stretch here there's first second it stays in third without yep stays in third fourth is good and look at that it's in fifth gear 
Nice, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> She's nice to drive. Call that one done, James. You think? Pretty much. And go. Very nice. 71 in second? That nice. was in seven. There's Damn. still another 200 or so RPM to go, but there's Damn. no power up there. That's awesome. Oh. Sweet. Look at all them stickers. <laughs> <laughs> you pulling it in? No, I've been parking like right here, so it's easier to get out of the doors. Yeah. Because there's no room between the two. So what do you think? I like it. I'm happy. Looks good too. Look at that shifter. Mm. 